the uh, device selected, the input device, but we will cope if it's not. So just going back to the constraints there, there's a stack of stuff we can do. Um, we can select frame rates, we can ask for facing modes uh, like front or back camera, and so on, uh, and some stuff with uh, audio as well. Uh, one little warning, if you ever do this, uh, you, and it goes wrong, you get this really unintuitive little error message. Okay, so what you get, it's kind of a permission denied error. I'm sorry about that. Um, I wanted to show a couple of, uh, let's have a look. Hang on. Of get user media. Uh, I just thought that this was really nice. It's uh, like a uh, little ASCII art. This is, yeah, that's our new uh, codec. You know, it's much better than H264. Um, well, this is kind of cute as well. Um, this is, uh, yeah, you can see like movement controlled slides, which sort of works. Uh, this is a game called Face Cat where you have to move side to side. It does, it's doing face detection, oh, so I've got to start. And you can see I'm controlling the game, sort of, well, via moving. Yeah, anyway, there we go. Um, and one of the old favorites, I'm sure lots of people have already seen this. Uh, this is webcam toy, but you know, it just shows you really, really simple stuff uh, where you're getting uh, images from get used to and do filtering and a whole lot of neat stuff. Just it's really simple sort of code and slightly trippy. Anyway, um, this one I, I, again is an old one, but I, I still love it. Um, it's um, a xylophone controlled by moving across. And is it going to make any audio? Yeah, can we hear that? That's just nice. It's just detecting movement. Um, really, really simple. Um, and it works, which is nice. Anyway. Um, stuff. If you want to have a look, um, there's some more demos there as well. Um, now, what's happened recently is that uh, we've had the ability to integrate Get User Media. And what this means is we can use uh, microphone input as uh, input for web audio. Uh, it's really straightforward. I'm not going to go through the code now, but you can see it's very simple to create a uh, stream source from Get User Media and then work on that stuff useful for, um, for musicians and uh, developers who want to do that kind of music stuff. Um, let me just show you, chug, 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 if that's going to open, an example of this. Um, uh, I'll, I'll try and uh, kind of sing a note, and this is going to try and do pitch detection. Ah, uh, get the jump there. Um, um, I'm probably going to run out of time, so I'm not going to show you any of those. Oh, maybe this one because it's cute. Hang on. Um, this is uh, using uh, web audio, uh, get user media input to work, oh God, to, you can see it's doing sonic effects as well, but it's also controlling the, uh, the, the WebGL stuff there. And uh, yeah, we were thinking this would be a great game if you could get, like manipulate your voice to kind of control a ball sort of making its way through the mountains there. Anyway, um, there's a stack more of those integrated with WebGL. Um, and uh, Chris Wilson, who did that demo, has also done a really nice little hello, 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 hello. Um, hello, hello, hello. Yeah, so, yeah, that's, you can see is a, uh, a little uh, recording app, which is pretty neat. And, uh, yeah, recording is coming to these APIs natively, but uh, it's not there yet. Another one there where I've done it backwards. Thing. Anyway, um, so... The, uh, the cool thing that we have uh, also now is to be able to go from get user media to web audio and then, of course, to RTC peer connection. In other words, uh, to be able to get microphone input, say, process it, and then pump it into uh, you know, peer to peer communication, which is great stuff. There's a whole lot of great examples there on the W3C page. And this is, uh, this is uh, just being built into Chrome now, which is fantastic. Um, and uh, we can also do, if I'll show you here, um, we can do screen capture and we can also uh, put that as an input to RTC peer connection. It's really simple. You just give a mandatory 
um, uh, constraint. At the moment, it's in Chrome. It's called Chrome Media Source, uh, but that will be standardized. Let's have a look at that in action. Uh, I'll just make this a bit smaller, otherwise it's a bit hard to see. Hold on. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm capturing the screen on the left, uh, and then I'm using RTC peer connection, I mean, within the same page, I can show it, uh, to do screen capture, and then I have to come out of full screen. Uh, and then if I do that, you can see it's... It's doing a screen capture and it's giving us the ability to send that to someone else via RTC peer connection, which is very powerful. I can see very useful for lots of different kinds of stuff. You know, if you want to, I don't know, debug your grandma's computer and that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I just wanted to talk a little bit about RTC peer connection because uh, this is kind of the meat of uh, the WebRTC project in a sense, uh, the kind of core of it. Um, this diagram is really just to show you that it does a lot of stuff. Uh, RDC Peer Connection does things like uh, dynamic uh, jitter buffering, which it sort of stops uh, video hiccups, uh, noise reduction, uh, gain equalization to make sure volumes don't go up and down too much, image cleaning, and so on. So it, you know, it spares developers a lot of grief. There's been an embarrassing series of different names, but we're sorry about that. Um, now, to do uh, WebRTC peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, uh, you need to do two things that aren't specified by WebRTC. Uh, you need to do peer discovery and signaling. Um, so discovery is the process of you know, making contact with someone. It's like knowing someone's telephone number. Um, it's uh, you know, a, a similar example of that we've seen with most of the uh, RTC peer connection demos is people will just share a URL that has a unique room number, something like that. So that's a kind of discovery. Um, signaling is this process of exchanging metadata. Uh, it's uh, you know, coordinating the uh, process. So for WebRTC, we need to do two things. We need to share network information and media information. So um, if we have a look at uh, some examples, we're, you know, it's, it's sort of sad. It's peer-to-peer, -peer, but uh, we, you know, we've got to use these servers. So WebRTC doesn't uh, specify the way that signaling should happen. So you can use whatever mechanism you like, uh, whether that's WebSocket or some of the Google examples have uh, XHR with the uh, Google App Engine channel API for the actual uh, signaling mechanism. And you can use whatever uh, signaling message format you like. So we've seen SDP, but uh, other people are using, you know, in theory, you could use XMPP and so on. Um, but just to be clear, that's not part, you know, that's not specified by the WebRTC project. Um, this is called, this architecture is called JSEP. Oh, this doesn't really show anything except uh, the actual communication of audio, video, arbitrary data is between the browsers peer to peer. But, the signaling that you have to do to set up a session is between this kind of magic cloud thing. Um, if we look at uh, this uh, W3C example, um, I think this is, by the way, this is a, the link is there. This is a really nice, simple example of how to use RTC peer connection. Um, I'm not going to run through the whole thing, but uh, essentially what happens here is the uh, uh, if the if the if the uh, the creation of the RTC peer connection object is successful, um, on ice candidate is called, and that has information about network stuff, and you can send that in the, this. We have this kind of uh, you know assumption that there is a signaling channel here, and uh, that's the network information that you will send to the person you want to communicate with. And then if we look in the section down the bottom here, so that's kind of readable. Um, in the, in, after the get user media uh, call is successful, um, we do what's called create an offer. What this means is uh, use peer to connection to create some information about the capabilities locally. So what kind of, uh, what kind of media we're thinking of communicating, what kind of media we can handle on the way in, so codecs and so on. Um, and then we can send that to the remote, uh, the callee, um, what do we call them? The receiver. And uh, on the other end, if you're the person being called, you do what's called create an answer. 
And essentially, that's doing the same thing in reverse. So giving the coalition about your media capabilities. So once we've created this RTC peer connection object, we've uh, got the network information and shared that, got the media information at both ends and shared that, then we can uh, set up a session. Um, now, yeah, so there's the signaling process, like I say, which is that, and uh, then there's the process to uh, make an offer, which is about media. Um, there's a really uh, simple version of this on one page at uh, symbol.info slash PC, which doesn't do any signaling. So if you just want to get into peer connection, that's a good place to start. We've, this is great. We've now just very recently in Canary got uh, WebRTC internals. So this is debug information about what's going on in a WebRTC session. It's very detailed and incredibly useful if you're trying to debug kind of deeper problems with, with WebRTC. Uh, the canonical example of uh, communication with WebRTC, RTC peer connection, is at apprtc.appspot.com. And you can use this between Chrome and Firefox and, uh, and Chrome and uh, Chrome for Android as well. I just want to check how much time I've got. About 10 minutes. Cool. That's great. OK. So, RTC data channel. Um, this is it's kind of uh, taking some of the power of uh, peer connection and giving us the ability, though, to communicate arbitrary data. Um, this is obviously really, really useful for things like gaming. Um, I kind of imagine, too, you know, like these really fantastic sort of scientific applications for this. Like you could have, imagine like a, if we've got a Raspberry Pi running like hardware accelerated Chrome somewhere out in the ocean on a fiber cable, um, you know, getting some data about water temperatures and then sending that back in real time via RTC data channel to a receiver, you know, in Lyon. That would be really cool. So it's very, very low latency. It's as low, a late, as low latency as possible, we hope, between two peers. So wherever possible, communicating this data peer to peer. The API is very like WebSocket, but of course, because there's not the kind of trip via the server, it should, you know, when all is well, things uh, should be much quicker, less hops, lower latency. Um, there's this concept of unreliable versus reliable uh, exchange of data. So, uh, for example, thinking of games, uh, you may want to compromise and not, you may not have to have reliable transfer of data for stuff like game positions. Uh, you want the speed more than you want the reliability, whereas stuff like file transfer, obviously, you know, you can't lose bits on the way. It's not going to work. So for that, you absolutely have to have uh, reliable data sharing, you know, networking, and uh, the, the payoff is that that may be a little slower. Um, there's a very simple example of, of um, in fact, let's show it now. Here, get rid of that one. Um, the, again, this is... Uh, simple.info slash dc. Uh, this is kind of nice because it's, again, it's on one page, so there's no signaling. It's sort of, it's completely useless, but, you know, you can see one peer connection communicating with another, uh, and if we do send, yeah, you can see magic, you know, we've got, yeah, <laughs> text being communicated via RTC data channel within one page. So kind of, yeah, kind of useful stuff. Um, there's the API. You can see it's, uh, it's actually, once you've got your head around signaling and RTC peer connection, it's, it's really pretty straightforward stuff. Um, and it is quite WebSocket-like. Um, I just wanted to show another demo, uh, if we've got this up and running, somewhere here. Yeah, there it is. Uh, so ShareFest has uh, built this uh, app for file sharing using RTC data channel. Uh, we could drag something on, or we can just click there. I'll select a file. Got this little file here, this little picture, and it's doing something. It might work. Uh, so what it's trying to do is do file sharing with this file. Come on. It's thinking about it. <laughs> no, maybe we try one more time. Let's just try again. Might be a bit tricky here. Okay, try again. Here we go. Okay, 
And if we open that in a new tab, let's have a look. Hopefully. Okay. We try and get the, there it is. Okay, so we've got the file that's been transferred. I know it's just from one tab to another, but it is, you know, via the internet. And let's just see if it worked. Yes, there it is, this lovely peacock spider. They're actually about that big, which is cool. <laughs> lovely Australian spider. Anyway, um, sorry, that's probably a bit creepy, really. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go back from these and get rid of that and the lovely ASCII art one. Um, so great stuff with RDC data channel. Um, there are two other things that, uh, that WebRTC gives us. Um, the, like I say, we need servers for user discovery, communicating between users uh, and for signaling. We also get the ability to use uh, something called STUN. Um, STUN servers give you an external view of your network information. So in other words, uh, IP addresses, ports and so on, so that people can contact you um, even if you're behind a firewall, uh, you know, NAT, whatever. Um, uh, turn servers um, are there so that we can, if all else fails, we can go via what's effectively a relay server. So if the peer-to-peer -peer connection fails, the worst that will happen with WebRTC using a turn server is that it'll go via, a, you know, a third-party relay server, um, which, you know, is obviously not perfect, but it's at least as good as things, you know, before WebRTC. Um, and this whole thing is called the ICE framework, um, which gives us uh, the ability to, to cope with, you know, all the vagaries of network conditions. And there's a little diagram of it, which doesn't really serve much purpose. Um, we need to think, too, about, like, uh, what kind of setup we have, you know, network topologies. Um, so uh, people might want to use WebRTC for peer-to-peer, -peer, just one-to-one, -one, or they might have a kind of small mesh, you know, something like uh, you and your mates uh, all have a connection to each other and uh, maybe sharing some information. Obviously, that doesn't work if you've got, like, I don't know, Barack Obama wants to do a hangout with 100 million people uh, where you need some kind of centralization. So, you know, that, again, that's not specified by WebRTC, but there's lots of ways to, to do that using, uh, using WebRTC. Um, if all this is too much, and I understand there's a lot of complexity there, um, thankfully, due to actually partially some of the people who are in this room, I think, um, we have some fantastic uh, frameworks and libraries and apps that have come through, in the, really in the last few months even. Um, we've got uh, EasyRTC, which gives us kind of full stack of uh, WebRTC stuff, so signaling server and abstraction layers for uh, the client sides. Um, and uh, so on and so on. We've seen ShareFest, so great stuff. Please, please tell me if I've missed something on this list because I almost certainly have. And we're going to have a look in a bit at Conversatio, uh, which uses simple WebRTC. Uh, here's an example of simple WebRTC: kind of straightforward bit of HTML, straightforward bit of JavaScript, um, setting up the WebRTC object, and then getting someone to share a room. Uh, PeerJS, pretty similar kind of stuff for. Uh, connecting, sending messages. Um, we've got apps. Uh, this doesn't really show anything except uh, Talkbox showing that it works really well. I don't know. Anyway, uh, these, are, these are apps that, you know, using WebRTC now for kind of video conferencing, which is great. And we've got uh, the ability to connect to what's called PSTN, so, you know, telephones uh, via gateways and so on, stack of stuff. You can imagine a lot of interest there. Uh, last year at Google I.O., we showed off Tether, which uh, was this really interesting thing where people set up disaster communications framework using the open BTS, uh, open, it's like an open source cell. Uh, so you, you have this thing in a, like it's like in a briefcase and it means you can have telephones, you know, with no carrier. Uh, it gives you the ability via, from like a feature phone via the open BTS cell then through WebRTC to a computer to do communications somewhere where there is no infrastructure, which is, you know, fantastic. Uh, somewhere, you know, where there's a disaster. Um, and the C++ stuff is there, of course. I've seen some great Q Qt uh, apps using uh, the C++ APIs. Um, there's a stack of stuff built into WebRTC about security, uh, so encryption is mandatory. Uh, like I say, we're using the ICE framework, which essentially has this kind of callback mechanism, which is really useful. Um, and the fact that WebRTC is built into the browser, in, I think, makes it 
you know, inherently a lot more secure than approaches where you have to download a plugin, install a plugin, users have to update, and so on and so on. Um, so that's a kind of a big part of it. Um, I just wanted to, uh, if people could have a go at this, I don't even know if this is going to work, but I thought we could try Conversatio and see if we can have a conversation. So if anyone's running, uh, it should work in, if someone's got uh, uh, you know, up-to-date version of Chrome or Firefox Nightly will work as well. Uh, we should, in theory, or Chrome Beta on Android should work as well. Um, so if you go to, uh, hang on, let me, it's conversat.io slash Leon. Uh, I believe this when I see it, but, uh, oh, here we go, we got someone. I might have to turn off the audio. Hey. Jesus, it's like Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> it's freaking me out. <laughs> I keep this, I keep looking out the window and feeling like I'm going to be seasick. It's like anyway. Uh, yeah, so that's a fantastic app. Um, you know, WebRTC right there in the browser, ready to go. No coding, which is great. Uh, lots of links here to the project itself. Uh, really great uh, Google group there. You know, please ask questions there. There's a friendly bunch of developers. They really really want to hear your comments. Uh, stack of documentation, and there's a book, which is good, and it's only like five, ten euros. A uh, little downloadable Kindle book, uh, e-book, I should say. Um, and please, 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 we really appreciate you know all the uh, all the the comments that people have made, feature requests, bug reports. It makes a huge difference if you can file those. Um, you know anything you encounter with WebRTC, we want to know. Um, you know what? What's what I really like is is this idea that we got like people from all kinds of web development, especially, and you know people working with JavaScript who are getting this stuff, kind of moving it out of just the realms of telephony. I think that's what's really interesting. Some of the big companies over the last year um, have been you know doing great things uh, with WebRTC, but you know they're web companies. They're not essentially VoIP companies or telephone companies, and that's really to me is really exciting. Writing, see what you know, like developers are going to do with this stuff. Um, so yeah, let me know if you, what you're working on. I, I really want to hear what people are doing. Um, you know, like uh, one of the guys I work for was saying that he felt that that you know human communication in the browser should be as natural as entering text in a text input. You know, I think that's that's great. That's great. So thank you very much. There's our friend the peacock spider again. And yeah, slides are here. And please feel free to ask me any questions. I'll be around today and tomorrow. Or email me. I'm Dutton at Google.com. Thank you. <laughs>